The Wednesday Week is sponsored by Bentoria.com. That's B E N T O R I A.com. <laughs> And a very well welcome to the Wednesday week, the Sheffield Wednesday podcast. Now, of course, normally you would be hearing Lord Hillsborough's voice, first of all, uh, but somewhat inexplicably, he's been called away on essential lording business, which I think has got something to do with prostitutes and drugs or something. So no, no Lord Hillsborough tonight, um, but we have got a bit of an experimental lineup for you this week. Um, I'm James and I will be your temporary anchor for this week. Uh, that was Anchor, stop being childish. Uh, also with you tonight, it's Victoria. Good evening, James. Hello. Hello. This, it feels strange talking it does, to it does. This, in this it's way. Um, yeah. Now, we have no Eddie tonight because um, he's just on his way back from Lapland, uh, where I believe he's been moonlighting as an elf for some pocket money. Um, <laughs> we've got no fudge either. Um, I've heard that he is currently <laughs> in talks to become Donald Trump's UK advisor. Don't know. <laughs> Um, instead, we have a very worthy guest weaker, and I've had to practice that a few times. Uh, it's that bloke off the telly. It's David Garrido. Very good evening. How are you doing? You're right. We are good. We are good. How are you, David? Am I, am I like am I like a sort of a, a second half sub? And if I was a second half sub, which out of the Sheffield Wednesday squad would I be? Would I be Gary Hooper? No, you'd be Jow. Or would I, yeah, Jow on a good day. Well, you say it all the right things. To be fair, tonight too. I would have sacked off any of the five of us to have you on. So. <laughs> I'm pretty happy with this. <laughs> I think, do you know what? I'm going to say, no, I'm I'm Alex Lopez. You know, it doesn't come on that uh, often. But when he does, it's a bit he sort of makes an impact. <laughs> sort of. <laughs> and also, he speaks Spanish. I speak Spanish. And I think he's quite a, sw- a sweet kid. I, I like I, I like Alex. We chat a bit on WhatsApp. He's a nice guy. And I want to be chat like on Alex. WhatsApp? Yeah, yeah. Hold yeah. your horses. Whoa. That means James texting David Garrido. That is like... <laughs> What? That he, is up hang on, there. wait. So when he texts me, does he kind of then show his mobile to you? Go look, look. I'm, no, he I'm does look very, very smug though, and sometimes tells us what you've just said. He's like, "Oh, David thinks it's going to be one nil." <laughs> Most of the time, we're sort of debating <laughs> the the merits or lack thereof of Claude Dielma. Um, but he, he is a regular Cloud. topic of conversation, isn't he? Yeah, yeah, it is. Oh, I have many merits for Claude Dielma. <laughs> <laughs> Do you want to do you want to expand on that? No, I just let me just have a moment. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> really? I, I wouldn't have had yeah. it on the list. Really? Except the little yellow stripe thing. But other than that, oh. Okay, well, we learn something new every night. <laughs> um changing the subject to actual football then. Um and I'm hoping you have both recovered from the uh the drunken drunken ramblings that I exposed you to during the derby match. Uh Vic of course had it in person. David, you did have it yep. by text. I apologise to both of you. Although well, very well spelt and, and punctuated text. So I can't think you were that drunk, were you? If you notice it did take so my mum had to take to him home. home. <laughs> <laughs> oh that sounds that sounds so embarrassing when you say it. <laughs> It <laughs> but it is true, she did. <laughs> oh dear. Anyway, it was a goalless draw in the end. Um, what did you make of it? Well, I thought we played very well. I thought one one of my worries was at half time. You know, I didn't want to hear the whistle, and I wanted us just to play on like it was just one big half. But um, we, we did come back out, and even though Derby did come back into it, I felt like we, if there was one team we were going to win it, it was us. I think. You know, if I'm going to be ultra picky, you could really tell that we didn't have that that real cutting edge up front. You know, that that chance that, you know, Pudil had when he screwed it, you know, across across goal. And then there was a, a couple of others where, you know, if it had been someone with, with that real incisiveness and that killer instinct, I think we would have scored. Um, and we were limited to long range in the in the first half. Bannon had a go and, and, and Baz is just so desperate to score. He is so desperate to score for us. And of course, Wallace had had what looked like it would be a, a worldie until Lee Grant decided to spoil the party and make a fantastic save. I, I just think we looked like a proper team. And, you know, given the injuries that we had, especially at the back, um, you know, the fact that Derby didn't really trouble us too much is really, really encouraging, I think. 
Yeah, I mean, I said, um, I actually sent it to the podcast like before I forgot because I figured I'd be a lot more drunk on Saturday, uh, Sunday than I was. Uh, but James kind of beat me to it. So I was saying before the match at like one o'clock, if you'd have said to me, look, will you take a point now? I'd have happily, I'd have snapped your yeah. hand off and said, yeah, let's have it. But come three o'clock, it did feel like two points lost. But isn't it that really, just, really felt like we could have won that. That's the nature of our, us improving, right? You know, we, it is. Originally, you think, oh, Derby at home, oh, God, I'll take a point right now, rip, rip your hand off for it. But then, yeah, I think, you know, that's a, a sign of progress that we are now, our expectations are rising through the 90 minutes and go, do you know what? We deserve to win that. Maybe just, just the one nil, but we deserve to win it. So I think that's a, that's a positive sign that we're being sort of that critical in that way, if you see what I mean. I think credit to Hutch as well at centre half. I know that is traditionally his spot. You know, that's that's where he was at Chelsea, the young John Terry and all that. Um, but I really think he just took to it. There was no question that the fact for the last four years he's been playing in a different position. He was completely solid. He didn't get booked until I think it was 51 minutes, which is pretty yeah. impressive yeah, at centre half Three, as yeah, well. Yeah. Um, but I think... I, like Westwood actually didn't have that much to do. He had a couple of things to do in the second half, but other than that, it was all on Lee Grant. And Lee Grant actually showed why he's still playing at this level. Yeah. Um, but I think I, I was happy with that. I was really, really happy and I enjoyed the game. I re- maybe because I was pretty sober, um, I saw the game. But <laughs> <laughs> um, it was it was a really, really good game to watch. On, I really enjoyed our, it. How, how many minutes of the 90 do you think you actually see Every Saturday that Wednesday at home, roughly. Uh, well, the first in. 10, 20 are a bit of a blur until the first right. kicks in. <laughs> and then I go down at half time to see James. And then by the time we bought beers, we watch them on the telly for about 20 minutes. And then I get back up to my seat and I've just had another beer. So probably about 40 minutes a week, I'd say. Right. Which, <laughs> which to be honest, is, is enough. Um, you know, at the moment, it's it's good. It's not too too much pressure on my heart. Um, but, but yeah, I re- I did really, really enjoy it. I didn't need to be drunk. I thoroughly, thoroughly enjoyed Saturday. I am. Um, I, I have reached a new personal low in the last couple of weeks uh, in terms of me missing football uh, because I missed two of the goals at uh, Blackburn last Saturday, last weekend, um, and then uh, midway through, about midway through the second half. Uh, the derby match and I was like I really desperately need to go to the toilet so I ran down to the toilet ran back up I could kind of hear some rumblings going on in the background and I came back up and derby were lining up a free kick inside our penalty box and I've had a a few beers by this point and I'm Hmm. just I just stood at the top of the gangway just thinking what on earth has happened? <laughs> my dad I've only been for gone a for a minute. T- Hold on a minute. My dad went for a wee at the exact same time, James. I didn't see him, but that doesn't did mean that he wasn't in the same toilet. Well, he did go at the exact same time and he came up and said the same. And I was like, that is literally the first back pass I've seen given in probably 20 years of watching football. It was blatant, but how many times did they gloss over them now? It's like and- a foul throat. It's as if they don't exist. And how hard did that shot hit the crossbar? I thought it was going to snap in half. Yeah, I thought it was. I thought it was. I thought it was going to go in off the underside. I was like, oh, you know, I was just so relieved to see it come back out because they wouldn't. Have, they didn't deserve to win that. They didn't deserve to win the game, and I think it would have been so harsh on us. And it was my real concern after Stoke that that you know, not so much that our spirit was broken, but obviously you know Tom Lee's being in bits and. Uh, also, uh, Jack Hunt and and Leuven's obviously picked up a bit of a knock, and so did Kieran Lee. You know, they were all sort of walking wounded. They were sort of hobbling out of the dressing room at Stoke when I wanted to see them. And you know, I just thought, oh, I really hope we don't get beaten badly by Derby. But even off the back of that performance, even a one-nil defeat would have just really, really annoyed me. Um, so I'm just so glad. I think it was justice done. Really, that came rattling back off the crossbar, and you know, we saw out the nil-nil. Um, you know, you know, I like a good statistic once in a while mm-hmm. um, and this I think this is right this is a stat that I've worked out myself and forgive me Vic because I may have said this repeatedly in the pub after the match probably uh, and forgotten about it but was I'm it pretty... can I have another Belgian blue no <laughs> it wasn't um, I'm pretty certain that in the league this season any games where we haven't scored we haven't lost yes I saw that z- exact same pattern today that is spooky and yeah you're absolutely right in the league if if we uh, don't concede, then we we don't get beaten, and you know that's a real bonus territory for us right now because at the start of the season we couldn't keep a clean sheet for love and money, and we've got five four in the last five games. So 
yeah, absolutely. It's, it's really important. You know, Carlos is not particularly known in terms of his defensive prowess as a coach, but it's showing that, you know, we're, we're keeping things tight enough to know those games where it is a little bit close, just make sure that we don't lose it. We take the point. If we snatch it, then then great, brilliant. But if we don't, we at least make sure we come away with a point, which um, which is really important. Um, obviously, we talked about Hutch and how well um, he did a, a, at centre-half, how good it was to have Bannon back. Uh, but it was Liam Palmer that got the... Uh, the oh, Sky just take the, the words right out of my mouth. I'd just come off mute to say, can we not forget to mention <laughs> how good Hutch was and Liam Palmer. He was outstanding. He's been really good. The, the two games that he's played, brilliant. he's been great. And and you'd think surely he's done enough now to keep Hunt out of the team when he's fully fit again. I don't know about that. I think, I think Liam, I mean, Liam obviously, you know, made that right back with his own under Stuart Gray. Uh, but, you know, I think, I think again, I'm going to, I'm going to play devil's advocate with you here. He, his final ball, I think, you know, there was one cross that sailed way over, way over the, you know, the, the crossbar. And there's a couple that, you know, got, got blocked and they went. But listen, you know, the, the boy hasn't been playing regular football. So how can you expect him to be delivering pinpoint crosses all the time? Um, Hunt is a is a different player. He's Yes, Liam loves getting forward, but, you know, Hunt marauds his way forward. Um, I would still go with Jack at this point. Um, and, and I like the understanding that him and Ross have got. I think, you know, when Ross checks in on his left foot and then you just see Hunt just absolutely, you know, pelts down the, the right-hand side, it just gives him the option, gives Ross that space. So I quite like that. Um, but, you know, Liam is, you know, putting the best possible argument to be included again, you know, for, for the next game against Cardiff. So, I mean, who knows? If, if Hunt isn't 100% for that, then, yeah, go for Liam because he's, he's you know, he's playing very well. That, that last game, I thought, do you know what? I'm, I'm really glad that he put himself about and he, he, he was d- defensively, he read it really well. That's what I love about it. So he, he was making good interceptions. He wasn't, you know, in any way defensively naive. So, you know, he's, he's grown as a player. He's got more than 100 appearances for Wednesday already at such a young age. So, you know, that just shows how much he's learned. Such a young age. Same age as me. <laughs> so young. Um, so young. So, so, so young. He should be in nappies. Um, <laughs> I thought he was, I thought he was brilliant. And I think, like you said, David, like there were one or two that did go out of play or they did go a little bit wide or whatever else but that does come with practice and the guy's not been playing in the reserves as far as I know Um, he's not had a first team game he's not really had any sort of look in from the bench I really thought he came into his own on Sunday and I think also just briefly I think you know it's good to have that competition in that berth I think it'd be nice if we could have that at left back as well if we could have someone pushing Poodle because you know he is the outstanding one for me you know, Royce has had a couple of, you know, appearances in the League Cup and also, I think he played against QPR um, and, and he, he looks OK. He looks OK. But, you know, with Poodle, you just feel so much safer. I think, you know, just generally. I love Poodle. I th- he's, he's just class. He's just class. He'll give you exactly, you know, 100 percent. He will absolutely fight for every ball. And he's just got that composure that comes with being that little bit older and, and, and knowing the championship. So, you know, I, I want someone to push him a little bit so that you know that should he get injured, then, you know, there is an app replacement there. Obviously, we've talked a little bit about Hutch and um, him picking up his... 11th yellow card of the um, of the season. Um, I did notice on Twitter early on, and this this made me smile. Um, a guy called Matthew Turner, who is at Matthew Turner 92, uh, who tweeted every single one of the bookies who are on Twitter asking for a price on Sam Hutchinson being booked in every game he plays <laughs> for the rest of the season. <laughs> and and inexplicably, none of them would give him a price on that, which I would think is a fairly safe bet. <laughs> Oh, no. Jeeves, we're going to need some more equipment. Then you need to speak to Oddballs, a speciality. What the? Oddballs, a speciality, deal in steel, food, and engineering equipment. Where is that voice coming from? We offer great deals on all types of equipment and can include dismantling, delivery, and erection anywhere in the world. Did he just say erection? We can also buy your surplus equipment or sell it on commission. With over 30 years experience, let us achieve the best deal for you. Where can I find out more Voice in the Sky? Go to www.bentoria.com You heard him folks. Jeeves, get a broom. It's been another good month for us in the PFA Player of the Month Awards. Uh, it's now the third consecutive month that a Sheffield Wednesday player has won it. Lucas Schwau uh, winning the award for 
November, which to be fair, I mean, it is kind of like a we've got more fans than you award, isn't it? Um, voted for by the fans and uh, three months in a, in a row that we've won it. But you've got to say with um, with some of the goals that he's scored, um, does, the, does the boy deserve it? Yeah, I, I think he definitely does. I think, you know, the, the goal against Huddersfield for me uh, and the one that we saw at Brentford too. I mean, you know, the Huddersfield one, perhaps everyone was a bit knackered. It was the last few minutes and, you know, he, but he had the composure and he's, he's got that, you know, right foot curled finish down to an absolute tee. Um, yeah, and he's grown. I mean, I remember seeing him at, at Ipswich and he was muscled off the ball by their centre-backs and it was a real baptism of fire. And you could tell, like, the, just the shock on his face. Like, oh, my goodness, what is this? It's not what I'm used to, you know. And he's, he's had a tooth knocked out. I mean, you know, the boy has really had to grow up and I think he has. And he scored some vital goals. He always seems to score late, doesn't he, Lukas? So, uh, you know, I, I think he does really deserve it. You know, he's got seven goals. And we're, you know, as you say, we're coming up to halfway point in the season. You know, this he could end up with, he could end up with 15, 16, 17 goals. Yeah, I think it's very well deserved. I really do. Yeah, I think there was a lot of debate as to whether he deserved it because of his time on the pitch and rah, rah, rah. But at the end of the day, you know, um, in fact, didn't, Hold on, I'm getting flashbacks. Didn't we talk about this last week with a different award that he got? Uh, we did, yeah. He, he, <laughs> like, he won... I feel like I'm just going back to last week's script. Yeah, but he, he won the Wednesday he, Player of the Month award, didn't he? He did. Yeah. He won the Wednesday Player of the Month award. And it's actually, strangely, it's the first time that the player that's won the Wednesday Player of the Month award has also then won the PFA um, Player of the Month award. Because the, other, the other two, which were... Yep. <laughs> Uh, which were Ross Wallace and Fernando Forestieri. They didn't actually win our own kind of club vote, but did oh. win the, uh, the the kind of the, the countrywide vote. But do you know what? It's, it's really interesting. When, I, when I've spoken to Lucas, he's such a, a humble guy. Like, he's so tall, but he sort of has this weird kind of... When he's, when he's there just standing around, like, waiting for some of the other players outside the dressing room and stuff, you know, he's got this, this real sort of, like... His stance is almost slightly stooped. When he's when he's not playing, he's just standing there, and he kind of like he seems quite, quite nervous. He seems quite sort of quiet. Um, I'm sort of chatting away with him there, and you know he's just listening to me rabbit on, and he's got this really kind of like gentle nature and and a nervous little smile. Um, you know, I'd like to see him you know really go out and express himself um, in in every single way. It must be tough, you know, when you're so young, you've come over from Portugal, you're settling, you know, in the north of England. You, you don't like the weather, maybe you don't like the food, whatever it is, but. He's really responded. I think that's the thing is that, you know, he's gone, well, this is a challenge, but I'm going to take it on. And he scored some great goals for us. You know, um, the one against Arsenal, the, then the one against Huddersfield, the one against Brentford. Um, you know, I think I think he's, you know, he's a real, a real prospect, but I don't want to hype him up too much. Um, but I know the clubs have been sniffing around him. So, you know, um, we, we've got to kind of, you know, make the most of him while, while he's still ours. And I hope that he does stay ours for a long time. Can I just ask you there, David, inside info, have clubs been sniffing around him or yep. are you going on the same rumours as us? No, I, I, I am aware of interest, yes. Um, uh, you know, I, I know, I know his agent and I think when he scored, I can't remember which goal it was, I said, you better not be thinking about moving him on in January. He said, he needs 15 or 20 more of those before we even consider that. So, you know, mm. look, you know, I think, I think we're in a, an all right place. I wouldn't worry about Lucas too much. Okay, a few more um, Wednesday-related items to um, to get through, uh, and of course it was the FA Cup third round draw on Monday evening, um, and an interesting one for us this because not only will it be the second time inside basically a week that we'll be playing Fulham, um, it will be Stuart Gray returning to Hillsborough. Oh, uh, my face last night during that draw! Oh my God! Right, I just sat down, just having our tea. We both sat there, all happy at the table, eating our tea. And the first draw comes out, and it's Fulham at home. And I was like, for <laughs> sake, Fulham, twice in a week. And then and then what if we get a replay, Vic? Get a replay? Oh, don't. I'm not and, going. Um, sorry, I'm not going to either. Here, I'm not going. You, I'm not you, going. You thought it was bad. I've just made it five times worse. No, look. OK, no glamour tie, fine. But we have had a couple already this, this this season, so let's not get greedy. No, no, this is shite. It's all a fix. It's an absolute fix. <laughs> I was fuming last night. I was ready to throw my spaghetti bolognese at the television. And I was, honestly, I've never been so angry. I was just like, I mean, at least we know they're a team that we can beat because we've already done it once this season and we probably should have well, done it in, in it a bit more style than, season now, than, don't we, we? than we should have done. Um I mean, I've got to be honest about it. It's not really the game that I was after. 
Um, and, and the main sort of reason for me is that, look, we're not going to win the FA Cup, are we? Um, I don't really care that much about the FA Cup. You know, we are, I know it's an old cliche, we're concentrating on the league and it's so true for us that we've already seen what the distraction of a cup run can do in terms of your your injuries and the effect that it can have. Um, so kind of like, you know, being drawn away to a Premier League team would have been perfect. It'd be a good day out. Um, we go there kind of expecting to lose. We put in a good performance. You know, the, the result is as, as expected and it means that we can get on with concentrating on the league. Fulham at home is really annoying, isn't it? Because it's a game that we know we should be winning. Um, it's a game we'll have played six days before. Yeah, so we'll know exactly what to expect. Um, so it'll be, it will be annoying for us to lose that game. And yet, I don't really want us to progress much further in the competition. It could well be, it could well be a, a game that means more to them than it does to us, given their position in the table, given that, you know, Stuart may well be still in charge at that point, depending on whether they are going to recruit a head coach in the, in the, in the meantime, or he may also have some involvement. So, you know, they, they may put more store in it than us. They come and beat us at Hillsborough, so be it. Um, I think the one thing that we really don't want is a replay. That's the one thing that actually I think, you know, both sides, especially us, we don't want another game, probably, I don't know, the 90th or 20th of January, when what, all we really want to do is have weekly games. We don't want to play Saturday, Tuesday, Saturday. <laughs> a weekly game against Fulham. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Vic, you, you do understand the, the concept of how these draws work. It is balls already... out of a bag. It's There's, there's, there's no kind of it's conspiracy not... there thinking. They've already had Arsenal this season. They're not no. getting another one. <laughs> no, what a load of shit, James. You are so naive, <laughs> right? You are so, so naive. There is no way that happened. And uh, uh, it just it infuriates me. I'm just angry. Ran over. Come on. Put, yeah. put you, you, you do some little yoga and deep breathing in the background. I am going to. Um, I'm going to, yeah. We, we, will, we will move on. Um, because something that's been doing the rounds a little bit on Twitter this week, and it's it's just kind of rumours at this stage, but a few people mentioning that there's talk that uh, in the summer that Mr. Chancery may be looking at uh, a new Sheffield Wednesday club logo, that we may be looking to have our logo redesigned. Um, supposedly is not a huge fan of the current one. Um, and, and that's something that could well be on the cards. I haven't seen this. Um, however, I've worked in marketing for 10 years and I am all up for a new logo, a new brand, whatever. That's pretty much every job I've had, I've had to do um, is bring in a new brand. But when it's when it's my baby, when it's Sheffield Wednesday, I'm a bit I'm a bit sceptical. However, as long as we're not called the Cardiff Red Dragons or whatever, I'm I'm quite happy. <laughs> I was going to say, I was gonna say <laughs> there is a there is a you know there's two words that will probably frighten the you know bejeez out of any Wednesday fan, and that's Vincent Tan. Um, yeah. And, you know, I, I just don't want us to go down that route. I can't ever imagine us in you know playing at home in anything other than blue and white. Um, and, and, you know, Asim Alarm trying to change Hull City to Hull City uh, Tigers. You know, I, I just not up for any of that. Hull City Tigers is a questionable one because that's what you've always called yourself. So stop moaning. But Yeah, but it's not the actual name of the club, though, is it? I think it's not. It's not. And it's like I've said before about Hillsborough Stadium. If you want to call it the Sports Direct Stadium or whatever, everyone will always say on a Saturday we're going to Hillsborough. Yeah, Hillsborough. But when it's when it's a logo, yeah. it is a little bit different. But it's interesting because City, Manchester City, have recently um, had some sort of a uh, kind of like almost like a, a consultancy with their own fans to to see how they feel about the logo and they're going to change the shape of it. So it was sort of square before and now it's, it's they're going back to a circular one and, and the, the design is different. Um, now, if it's something like that, where we get a say in it, well, then that's great. Uh, I'm not sure if that is true, if, if, the, if indeed the story is at all true. Um, but I mean, I think it's, it's such a personal thing, you know, the identity of a football club, the colours you play in, the name of the club, the, the actual club crest. They are such you know, um, important things to every single fan. You can't sort of be messing around with it. And, and you know, this is our heritage. You know, we're, we're 150 years old in 2017. Um, you know, I think uh, that really sort of hits home to me. Hmm. Now, whether it's the same old Aussie Albi can draw without your pen leaving the paper or whatever else, <laughs> uh, is it is it the end of the world if we do? I mean, to be fair, I preferred the old owl in, what, 2000 season, was it? The actual owl sat on a yeah. branch. Yeah, on the branch. Yeah, yeah. That yeah. was quite nice. Like, I don't, I don't see a problem with that. 
It was rubbish, though, wasn't it? It looked, no. it looked, it looked like it had been designed by a five-year-old. It, was it an wasn't owl very on a good. Branch. It was exactly how an owl should look. Don't change it if it's not broken. But at the same time, you've given us a lot of money. So if you want to put your own face on the badge, I'm quite happy, Mister Jones. <laughs> While we're on the subject of the uh, of the owl, I've got to give a special mention here to. Um, well, actually, I don't know who it is. It's a guy called David Ward. David Ward seventy two on Twitter, uh, who put a photo of. Like, he says it's his mate's house. So I'm not sure who it is. Oh, well, I who, see. You see, this is the guy that actually managed to create the club logo out of lots of strings of Christmas lights. I've not seen this. Can it I looks brilliant. It? I'm, I'm going to retweet it um, in, in a little while. It is absolutely brilliant and top effort as well because he's done that kind of by hand just with some strings it's, of lights. Very close. Can I just very close. just out to the club now? Next Christmas, sell those in store. I'd have five of them. <laughs> like, who wouldn't have one? That's got to be like I know we all campaigned for onesies like ten years ago. Surely, <laughs> an owl that you can sit in your window—that's the exact replica of the old school owl. Why not? What, in, in neon, like in flashing. Yeah. Yeah, I'd have one. It's I'd a have one mis- in my business opportunity, window. isn't it? I'll put, I'll it put in a word, Vic. I'll put in a word. Thank, thanks, Vic. <laughs> uh, we we touched on in in among that uh, discussion, we touched on the good old days of the early nineties, um, and this is something that we've talked a little bit about on the podcast before. But David, while we've got you here, mm. uh, the uh, the nineteen ninety one class of ninety one reunion that's happening in um, in April, uh, you will be compare for the evening, I believe. I will be, yeah. So while while you're on, I mean, I've got to ask you a little bit about it, really, because you'll you, you'll probably know a lot more about it than the rest of us. What we can expect, and um, and yeah, just what kind of an evening is is in store. Well, I don't know if any of you came to the. No, actually, well, I saw you, Vic, at the class of 05. Yeah. So, so that was that was obviously ten years since we won the League One playoff final at, at Cardiff Millennium Stadium, and that was brilliant. And it was it was great because it was you know the players still very recent, and obviously you know Brunton and uh... Weir, still playing and. Um, that was the kind of, you know, template, if you like, for this. But this is so much bigger. This is so much bigger because of, you know, the the actual achievement during that season, not just winning the League Cup, but going up to England's top division. And, you know, we haven't done that since. This is exactly what this crop of players is, is trying to do, you know, a, a good 24, 25 years on. So um, so I think, you know, the, the, the names that we're going to have are big we know we we know all the sort of Sheffield and North of England based players that are still sort of uh, around um, but we're trying to get players over from America Um, I'm speaking to John Harks at the moment but John has got a a job with a with a a, a franchise of an American you know of a a soccer team out there who was sort of built just below the MLS uh, in Cincinnati depends on his fixtures and stuff but we're trying everything we can to try and get him over try and get Paul Williams over as well Roland Nielsen is confirmed um, so that is great. You know, I'd, do you know what I want to do? Let's do another event, do just an, an evening with Roland Nielsen. That would be cool. <laughs> so you think, That's a like, great you know, idea. That, that, sounds, that, that sounds wonderful. I'm not yeah. going to lie. <laughs> no, that, yeah. So look, watch this space. But, you know, I think it's, it, the, the, we're managing to kind of put all our tentacles out and, you know, grab as many people as we can. I, I got Sheridan on, uh, on Sky Sports News the other day because... Uh, we wanted to talk about the Wednesday game against Stoke and obviously get into the quarterfinals and thinking about possibly, you know, a little run even further towards Wembley. So I thought, well, let's get Sherry on at least until we go out because otherwise it doesn't really work. Um, and I took the opportunity to say, hey, don't forget about, you know, mid-April. We, you know, we want to see you there because obviously, you know, he's, he's our goal-scoring hero from Wembley. So it's going to be brilliant. It's going to be all sorts going. I think, you know, uh, what we did in the Class of 05 was, you know, we tried to, put some video content in. We, we wanted to kind of spec it up a little bit. And I think we, we sort of did that. I think we can do it more. Um, and uh, Big Ron's going to be there as well. So, you know, there'd be plenty of entertaining people with, 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 with loads of tales. I personally, I know that he was only 19 at the time, but I did an event with him in London, um, uh, a Q&A, with Gordon Watson. And I think Flash is just brilliant. Um, you know, even, even if he didn't have a huge amount to do with that squad, he was, he was in it. He was there. And, you know, you need those people who can just give you a good story, too, as well as the, the big names like your Nielsen's and your Nigel Pearson's and, you know, Turner and, and Nigel Worthington and, 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 and obviously Hursty and people like that, you know. And um, it, it's going to be a proper, proper celebration. And we're going to give it absolutely everything we've got. Um, is a lot, a lot of interest. And we are oversubscribed. 
So we are going to see how we deal with that. Um, I know there's been a bit of confusion about um, t- buying tickets and stuff, but that's all being sorted out. Um, and so, you know, uh, if, if the demand is so immense that, you know, we have to think of another thing to do or how, how we're going to put it on, um, we'll, we'll, we'll cross that bridge when we come to it. But it's going to be a brilliant night. I'm so, I'm so excited about it. And this is still like, you know, what is it, like you know, about five months away. So, you know, almost four months away. So, yeah, I think it's going to be it's going to be a top night. I can't wait. I you, can't um, wait. I'm so excited because after the class of 05, that was a brilliant night. It was really, really good. I hate to point it out, but 1991, I was only three. I was a little baby. I was a little baby. Um, <laughs> however, I I still have memories of that. I still remember getting up that morning. My mum and dad had gone to like Wembley and I got up with my granddad, put my shirt on, got downstairs. I was so gutted that my mum and dad didn't take me, that he'd hung every Wednesday shirt in the house around the front room, off all the lamps off the wall. <laughs> um, and I sat there with my scarf on and my Wednesday shirt and my Wednesday shorts, Wednesday socks, like proper full kit wanker, and enjoyed <laughs> every single second. And that to me is like one of one of the memories that made me a Wednesday fan. And I can't I can't wait to be there. My mum and dad are going, David, you like you like to see my mum. I, um, I really want to meet. Babs. Yeah, Babs. <laughs> Go on, Babs. James is good friends with her now. She's, um, she's very good at getting you home if you've had a couple of drinks. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, I just, I can't wait. I'm, I'm really, really looking forward to it. And the fact that Wednesday week have a table as well. We do oh, actually have a table. Wow. Yeah, we we paid and everything. Some some serious secret handshakes have been going on to uh, to sort this out over the last couple of weeks. Either that or we've we've just paid for it. <laughs> I think you're going to be turning up with your microphones as well. Yeah, we have well, microphones James, and and muffs. Big, and muffs. big announcement being delivered. now, James. The muff muff day is imminent. The muffs are being delivered <laughs> tomorrow. <laughs> We will be with Muff tomorrow. I'm so excited. This is a big day. So, yeah, yeah. We're, it's going to be a really good night out. It's going to be a proper laugh. It's going to be stuff that I I remember, but I don't remember about the times. And I love hearing about those times as well. I love hearing Hirsty's stories. And I just can't wait. I think it's just going to be brilliant. And do you know what? They ought to have a table in that room, whether or not it's cordoned off or whatever, for the current squad. And just get them to sit there yeah. and see what that Not was like. Not a bad shout. Not a bad what shout. What that was like. Yeah. And appreciate what that means to all those people that 20 years later are going to sit there. 25 years later, sorry. Yeah, yeah, 25. 20, oh my God, I'm older than I thought. <laughs> <laughs> if there's any of the current squad that want to sit on our table, I'll set my mum off. So... <laughs> Particularly what a charming Dielner. daughter you are. Is that what I'm thinking? Dielne or Lightman yeah. would be marvellous. No, yeah. I see a, a small theme emerging there, or a big theme emerging there, as the case, <laughs> the case may be. For me, I was 10 years old when I went to, uh, to that game at Wembley, and I just remember sitting there at some point during the second half, and you know you just have a little moment, even when you're young, you just have this moment where you think, I need to remember this, yeah. because in years to come, I'm going to be glad that I can remember yep. being sat here right right now right here and I did and and I do I don't remember any of the match but I remember that moment when when I said to myself you ne- you need to make sure you remember this and uh, do you know what Lee, Lee Bullen said exactly that on the pitch in the Millennium Stadium in 2005 you know it took 15 seconds just to take it in everyone else was off celebrating but he just took 15 seconds obviously after we'd won uh, to sort of just kind of take take it all in and try and almost like photograph it into it, into etch it into his memory right there and then. And, and the other thing to mention as well, this is um, an event for the Chef Wednesday Community Programme. So, you know, there are good causes. And of course, we know one of them very well, Cavendish Cancer Care. It's going to be better yep. from this. So, you know, as much money as we can possibly raise. And, you know, we know that there is this intense demand. We're going to try and satisfy it as much as we possibly can. So if you are out there and you're waiting to hear on tickets or you know haven't had a reply just please be patient because there are people who are working on this right now we know that there are so many people who want to come and i think it's a case of just working out the best solution and and raising as much money because then of of course you know that the causes benefit and the more people we get there the more atmosphere there is barry banner barry banner barry banner
Well said. Um, right, a few more bits of Wednesday business for us to uh, wrestle through. Um, and, well, Wednesday-related birthdays. We've had quite a few over the last week. Oh, um, Christ. Well, well, we'll get to that one in a moment, Vic. You just hang on there. Um, it was David Hurst's birthday the other day, and I don't know how old he was. Uh, I'm guessing he's, Hurst will be kind of late 40s now, yeah. really, pushing yeah, pushing towards yeah. 50. But I did notice his, uh, his son tweeted a, 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 a photo like a poster on his wall of david hurst back in the day in his in his blue and white wednesday that's top. adorable and tweeted saying something like you know my hero my inspiration well, happy birthday it. dad that was just so nice to see i would kill to do that i would do you know what bill wood listen now i would kill to do that but the poster i would have with you would be in a red and white shit and I, i'm not very proud of that moment so <laughs> i don't i don't have that on my wall but amazing how good to know that your dad was david hurst like is david hurst but was the david hurst brilliant isn't it um it was also carlton palmer's birthday last week it was the big 5-0 for carlton um the cavendish legend yes um and of course um he wasn't the only person celebrating his 50th birthday last week because it was <laughs> carlos's 50th birthday as well and um, we did promise last week that we would mark this in the only way that we really know how to at the Wednesday week, which is with something completely ridiculous. Um, and I think we did that in style with Vic's very special uh, Mallorin, Mallorin Munro uh, tribute, Marilyn. if I can say it, um, up the stairs of the Riverside Cafe Bar just uh, next to the ground. And if you've not seen this, you've got to have a look at our YouTube page and have a look because, well, it is, it's just, it's beautiful. It is pure beauty. With a feather, <laughs> with a feather bow. Um, I'm embarrassed, but Carlos did follow me after said video, which has made me very, very happy. Made my fiance very, very mad. <laughs> um... Just to clarify that, you, you mean on Twitter, not some kind of strange stalking <laughs> up the yeah, stairs yeah, yeah. No, I didn't, on the yeah. road. <laughs> um, but thanks, Carlos. I appreciate your follow. I hope you appreciate my feather bow. Uh, we, we did have another tweet sent to the podcast this week uh, concerning Carlos, which was also pretty good, uh, from uh, Simon, and I can't remember what his username was, created uh, Carlos yes. for the top yes. of his Christmas tree, which is, uh, if you've not seen the photo of it, it's on the Wednesday Week Twitter account. It is quite superb, uh, and it's so good, actually, that I've decided I'm not even going to bother putting a Christmas tree up this year because I can't compete with it. <laughs> It is Carlos amazing. himself has favourite is it, is it, it or like liked it his, or whatever you call it now. Is it a picture of his face? Is it what what is it exactly? It is oh, it is a picture face. of his face and he, he's slightly kind of angelic but appears to be wearing a nice suit as well. <laughs> uh, it's very clever. There's some well, serious... that is Carlos. Or does it have a cardigan with the suit as well as the suit? Cuz um, that, that's the look. Yeah, it's uh, there's, oh, there's, a, there's an element of cardigan there as well. Yeah, good. A couple of other things that I've uh, noticed just to mention, um, something I saw on Twitter earlier on and this, I assume that this must be either a, a Coventry fan or a Cardiff fan because this is from at CCFC underscore Jules, uh, who is a, a guy who is a massive Lego enthusiast and has built an entire replica of Hillsborough from Lego. Um, and it's actually pretty good. It's worth having a look at. So it's CCFC underscore Jules. Um, and it, it is an entire replica of Hillsborough made from Lego. It's brilliant. Um, we are now approaching that time of the year where it's all right to look at league tables. We're not. Where are we it. officially now, James? Well, it, I would point out at this stage that even Carlos himself said in his interview after the game that league tables mean nothing in December. January, you're all right. You can have a look. <laughs> I wouldn't be able to tell you. I think are we joint sixth now? We're, we're seven, we are. We're, seven, we're, uh, we're uh, out of the top six on on goal difference. Oh, bloody by hell, one as well, by one. And I'm all right in thinking that the team that's keeping us out of the top six is Cardiff. You're absolutely right. Yes. So potentially, 
you know, we could arguably call it a six pointer coming up on um on the Saturday. <laughs> yes, I suppose you could. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, look, you know, I think that that is that is going to be tougher uh, than you know some of the games we've got coming up, MK Dons and Wolves. But I think you know Kenwin Jones and, and Joe Mason as well. He's playing well. Um, I think you know Kenwin just. We we know how good he is. We you know I know that it was a long time ago that he played for us, but God, we were trying to get him back so many times, haven't we? And he's still got it, even though he's that you know he's he's, he's over thirty now. So uh, he's the main threat for me. And um, look, if again uh, this might sound a little bit mm, defensively minded, but if we go and get a point there, I will still be happy with that. I'd like to think we can nick it, given the way we played against Derby. Um, but you know. If you if you give me another nil nil or a one one, I won't be disappointed with that. Do you think they're thinking the same? If we can get a point against Sheffield Wednesday, we're happy. Yeah, I think I think they are. I think they're conceding a lot at the moment, Cardiff. They they you know almost lost to, to Bolton. They they would they they won against Bolton, but only uh, only just three two late on, and and they have been a little bit erratic of late. So I, I think probably they are thinking. Do you know what actually? You know, Wednesday, Wednesday coming here in, in, in decent enough form. You know, it's only a, you know, a couple of defeats uh, in all competitions in, you know, what's it, a dozen or so games. So I kind of think, yeah, they're, they're probably a little bit wary of us. Um, it, it's hard to tell, isn't it? Because Cardiff have, have really been kind of dragged through the hedge backwards over the last couple of years since they were relegated from the Premier League. They've had a really hard time. Um, they've been through a couple of managers... They've never really kind of seemed to have recovered to a point whereby they are kind of making the waves that a team like Cardiff should be doing in this in this league. You know, last season was a bit of a non-event for them. Certainly the start of this season was a bit of a non-event for them. They're just starting to come into that bit of form now. Um, you look at their team on paper and, and really they should be going, particularly their home games, they should be going into those games thinking we can beat anyone on our day. You know, they've got a decent squad there. Um, I think that they've got... Um, you know they've got a solid manager in in Russell Slade, who's you know going about things the way that that uh, uh, you expect a, an English manager to to do it. It's been kind of like a slow approach from him, kind of building up what they've what they've got, um, and and I think it's it's really hard to call Saturday because. I think we we would go into that game thinking a point's probably a good result for us. Maybe they're going into it thinking a point's a good result for them as well. But we're certainly both going into it thinking this is a game that we can win. And actually, if we're serious about being in the top six at this stage of the season, you know, we're not at the beginning of the season anymore. We're not at the business end of the season any, anymore. We're right bang in the middle of it. And that's when you've got to be beating the teams that are, you know, there or thereabouts with you in the league. I think if, if you want to be the one that, that gets ahead. You do. You absolutely do. I, I had a bit of trepidation about this month when I used to see, see who's coming up. Obviously, we had, you know, Stoke in the League Cup and, and that was a different kettle of fish, really. But when you I think you've got Cardiff, okay, Discount, NK Dons, and then Wolves, Birmingham, Borough. I was like, oh, goodness, how, much, how many points can we really expect from this? But but I kind of think, do you know what? I go in with a little bit more optimism now. I think Wolves are very beatable. And I think Cardiff, again, you know, yeah, they... they they might have generally have a, a bit of a tie to the defence and we've had this season, but we're now starting to show a bit of solidity and they're starting to concede. Now, we both score goals, so I reckon that actually it could be a, a really, really open game. That's what I'd love to see anyway, uh, because, you know, I think at the moment we're kind of on the on the right end of the three twos, you know, so I, I'd quite like to see that and us to just go for it. You know, we don't seem to have a notion of playing at home or away at the moment. We seem to play the same way no matter where we're playing. So, you know, hopefully if we've got, you know, more, more or less the same team as we had last time, I don't think there's going to be any changes. I don't think that any of the players who are out are any closer to, to coming back. Uh, Lees, I think, is going to be out for, for a little while. Maybe Hunt over Palmer, that's a judgment call. But otherwise, I think it's going to be pretty much the same team. Um, you know, and, and, and I think that's got a good chance of beating Cardiff. Obviously, we've touched on the fact as well that um, we've we've got another game kind of hot on the heels of that against MK Dons on Tuesday, which in in some ways to me is almost a, a more difficult game than going to Cardiff. Um, what what kind of game do we expect from them? It's a Tuesday night. It's Milton Keynes. It's one of the most soulless places on earth. But um, actually, I, I think they're poor. I think they're a poor team. Um, they they don't offer much going forward. I mean, if if we're getting scared of Simon Church and Dean Bowditch, then I think that, you know, we've got worse things to worry about than that. Um, I honestly do, you know, they, they, they've only won what is it, one in their last 
eight, I think it is, or something like that. So, and, and that was against Charlton. I think you know that was when Charlton on a bad run. So I, I personally think that you know this is going to be okay. I don't have too many too many worries about about that particular game. I think it's a game where exactly where we should be picking up three points. Um, and, and if we don't, then you know we don't deserve to be in the top six. Player for player, we've got a better squad than them. Can I just throw out two words here that will frighten the life out of every Wednesday fan? Go on. Darren Potter. I knew you were going to say that. <laughs> <laughs> he'll have a, he'll have a worldly game, won't he? No, probably not. Kieran but Lee do... will be chasing him round for ninety minutes. <laughs> he's still playing, and he's in the championship. It's just it's obscene. There's a, there's a couple of players. There's a couple of players. I mean, I think you know, it's Nicky Maynard who can score goals at this level. Never really is is has gone up to his full potential. I don't think. There's and he was Kyle too... McFadden as well. He was at Sheffield United for a while. It's Sheffield yeah. United, as far as I know. Yeah, and then there's uh, Gus's son Diego Poyet, who is an interesting one. Um, could be brilliant. Could be absolutely awful. So th- there's enough unpredictability there to you know make sure that we're on our guard. But again, I just I just honestly think with Forestieri and Joao, I, I just can't see many, many defences really living with them uh, as long as they link up. I still think Lucas isn't quite the, the finished article yet. I mean, he's still so young, but and is he a true number nine? Well, he doesn't really play like a true number nine. He kind of drops deep, drops wide quite a lot. Um, and, and so I still think that needs a bit of work. But, you know, I think especially with our runners as well, with Bannon, with Lee, I think there's so much going forward there that's that's kind of difficult to deal with. And especially MK Dons, for goodness sake. I mean, they're 20th. We should be beating them. I, I think we will beat them comfortably. I don't know if you get this. I, I get just a different feel about us this season. Yeah. You know, it's, it's, I am it's... really cocky this season. I must well, I'm yeah. really, really cocky about us. I don't, but that, James, what about you? I, I'm kind of sensing that there's just a little bit more sort of... We're still grounded... It's still kind of reality, but there is some real, genuine self-belief. And that's why I, that's why I think, MK Dons, we should be going there and getting, you know, a 2-0 win. Whereas before, I might be going like... Ish. My, my only worry, really, when it comes to, to games like that at the moment is that having Hutch in centre midfield has been kind of our secret weapon in those kind of games, that we, we can fight in midfield and we can be scrappy in midfield. If if we're going into uh, the game next, next Tuesday with Hutch at centre-half then we, we kind of lack that a little bit in midfield and we don't really have anyone that can come in and do that. You know, we know that, that Samido came in for a few games and, and wasn't at the same sort of level. Uh, we played on Sunday kind of without anyone really doing that that kind of defensive midfield role as such. But can we go to somewhere like MK Dobbins and not have that kind of player? That's That's just what worries me a little bit at the moment. I know what you mean. I think we can because I don't think that they're good enough to hurt us in that way. If Derby aren't, then I don't think MK Dons are. Um, I, I think we can go and, and, and have a more offensive player or a passing player, stick in Lopez, as, as we did uh, in our last game. I, I think, actually, it's not too bad for this game. Cardiff, perhaps, might be a different kettle of fish if we haven't got uh, that midfield enforcer. I would be tempted to play Semi. I, you know, I, I know he hasn't quite been there, but he has been dependable over the years. And I think overall, consistency-wise... You know, he's, he's sort of been there and, and he hasn't disappointed on too many occasions. Might take the odd booking. But, you know, if you want someone who's got that sort of terrier feel, then, then you know, the semi's as close as it gets when you haven't got Hutch there. So, you know, I don't think it's as crucial for MK Dons. I think for Cardiff, you know, you might feel it a little bit more. What, what are we thinking in terms of our attack? Are we uh, Do we stick with uh, Joao or are we going to bring Atty back in? How, how do you think that will play out? I think you need an Atty against a team like them. We need a big, there's no way to say it, but a big bastard up front who's <laughs> going to get every ball to him, who's going to run through, who's going to hold it up and play it onto someone like Fozzie or like Joao who's going to score the goals. Um, I said this last week about I do feel for New Hugh a bit in the way that at the moment he's not classed as a poaching striker, which he isn't. Um, but are people going to get on his back for not scoring or are they going to appreciate the fact that he may well set up a few goals against teams like MK Dons? For me, I, I see clearly what roles they play, Joao and, and New Hugh. And Joao is so much more mobile. He's got that pace. He's, you know, he, he's got that real threat. But New Hugh takes other players out of the game. You know, he is awkward. He's, he's, everyone knows this. But what he does is he creates space for others. You know, Kieran's got more space. Ross has got more space. Bannon, well, he flies around like, you know, a headless chicken anyway. 
but he's got more space because they're so concerned about Newhill. They'll sometimes put two men on him or they'll just be distracted, you know, and I think that that is a real key skill. So, you know, and when you do get it down, down to his feet, yeah, he doesn't have the pace, but yes, he's got quite good feet. So, uh, and he's getting better at winning headies. He's getting better at holding the ball up too. Um, so, you know, the, the one for me, which is still the, the, the you know, I suppose the, the enigma is Hooper. Um, I, I just, he hasn't settled yet. You know, he's apparently, his finishing and training is just spectacular. And and yet, you know, in games, well, he's barely got close to the ball to, to even get a shot away. So, you know, for me, it's, it's between those two and, and Hooper as an option off the bench. But again, when you bring him on, I don't know, do you feel particularly inspired right now? I, I just don't no. know. He's no super sub, is he, at the moment? Um, I'm, I'm waiting for him to prove me wrong. Or to to prove my hopes right. Is is there an argument with where things are at the moment with with Atty and with uh, Lucas that to say that if we want um, a, a third striker that we can kind of bring off the bench for for the for the amount of money that we're playing for Gary Hooper, do we send him back but call Keelan Lavery back and give him a shot? Uh, I'm not sure that I don't know how Carlos feels about about Keelan. Uh, I think I, I you know uh, as. I'm not sure if Boucher is fit at the moment. Is he fit? I don't think he is, but he, he he's not far away. And if, you know, I'd like to see a little bit more of him. I'd want us to go in again because, you know, those sort of twinkling lights of the Premier League are pretty distant, but they're there. They're there. And I'd like to think that, you know, Mr. Chan Siri would, would, would say, hang on a minute. You know, if we're going to, if we're going to do this properly, we've got to go in again. I know we've already signed 16, but do you know what? Why not? Why not two or three more? For me, I still I think we still need a, a striker, a centre back. You can see already how how frail we are in that department, and and maybe a sort of creative-ish, you know, attacking midfielder just in case Kieran or Forestieri get injured. The Wednesday week is proud to be associated with Cavendish Cancer Care. Cavendish is a Sheffield charity dedicated to improving the quality of life for people living with cancer. No one should face cancer alone, so Cavendish provides emotional support through counselling and complementary therapies. The services they provide are free of charge and are funded through donations. If you can help or would like to find out more information, you can go to www.cavcare.org.uk. That's C A V C A R E.org.uk. A couple of other things to mention. We've had a message from uh, Matt. Uh, who is part of the Wednesday Sing group on Facebook, just telling us about uh, a charity event that they're doing uh, to raise money for the new wing at the Children's Hospital. They're doing a 10-mile walk around Lady Bower Reservoir. It's on Sunday, the 31st of January. Uh, the rules, pretty simple. It's a minimum donation of a pound to join the walk, but you must wear blue and white, which I think is a good call. So well, yeah. thank you, Matt, for letting us know about that. Awesome. Um, and that's just about it. Other than, I have to mention, I think I had my first experience of trolling on Twitter this week. Um, Was it me? No. Well, I've been, I've been accused of being the person behind a parody account on Twitter, uh, which is at Physio Atkins, which is obviously <laughs> Nigel Atkins' um, <laughs> Twitter account, which is actually quite funny. Um, and I've been getting a bit of stick from United fans because there was a point yesterday where someone took a screenshot of uh, this this Twitter account was only following two people yesterday, which was the Wednesday week and me. So naturally, because of that, I was accused of being the person, uh, right? which I'm it's not. Definitely you. It's you. Trust me. Some of the tweets are quite funny. I'm not that funny. Um, that is true. But it was quite good because I've been getting a bit of stick from uh, United fans calling me all kinds of um, things. So I thought, I'm quite proud of that. You know, my first experience of internet trolling. Well done, you. You've made it. That's oh, it. That's it. You're famous. Rock on. Rock and roll. Rock and roll. Uh, I just want to mention, guys, a huge thank you to all of the Wednesday fans and the Derby fans, of course, that clapped at 18 minutes for Absolutely. Caroline Everest. Right. Yep. Definitely. Unbelievable. Such an emotional moment. Um, the whole ground stood up. Um, Westwood even just held his goal kick back more than he normally does uh, just to clap at that moment. And it's we mentioned it last week, guys. It's a really, really emotional subject. It's horrendous. But if her family can take any sort of comfort from the fact that everyone is behind them and appreciates that horrendous loss that they're going through yeah yeah well said i mean you know it was it was impeccable it was you know i was i was obviously watching it live on sky and you could really hear it 
you could really hear it. it was so strong and it was so well observed and and you know RIP Caroline it's it's just a you know it is such a loss but you know it was so such a beautiful response from from everyone at Hillsborough it was just you know perfectly done it was really well played well, thank you very much for uh, for your company this week on the Wednesday Week podcast. Um, Victoria, if people want to get hold of you, how do they do that? They do that on at Victoria1867 on the Twitters. Um, David, it's been a pleasure having you with us uh, this evening. Um, if anyone is listening that doesn't already follow you, how would they um, how would they track you down? It is on Twitter as well. It's at Sky Sports David. So, yeah, give me a cheeky follow. Um, I, you know, obviously I tweet a lot of Wednesday stuff and a lot of other sport and travel and random stuff as well so uh if you want to sit me on mute at times that's fine but generally on a saturday keep me keep me back on that's fine uh, of course if you want to follow me on twitter i am at james marriott definitely not at physio adkins um, you can follow the podcast at TWWcast. Uh, you can find us on facebook just search for the wednesday week and if you want to send us an email that is twwpodcast at gmail.com and don't forget to check out vic's video on our youtube page um, and james's whenever he finally Oh, oh, unfortunately, it. it didn't record right that one. So, it did, uh, it we, did, because I recorded it. It recorded we, perfectly. Yeah, no, it didn't. Unfortunately, that one will stay. Oh, you're uh, such an arse. That will stay <laughs> hidden forever. <laughs> Hopefully, of course, next week we'll be back to normal with our usual host, Lord Hillsborough, back from his lording duties. Uh, but until next week, thank you for your company, and uh, we'll speak real soon. <laughs> I was gonna, I was yeah. gonna pepper her with questions about it. Like, you know, did you have like a blow up, blow up skirt? Did oh my god! Wig? She just sent me a video of Daniel Poodle saying "Happy Christmas, Victoria." <laughs> wow. Last year it was New Who. This year it's Poodle. So I will send that to the podcast. I just need to listen to it for myself. So, chat. That's pretty good. <laughs> How do I moot this shit? <laughs> How do I get rid of you for a second? What What are you doing? I want to listen to the video of Daniel Poodle saying "Happy Christmas, Victoria." Can we um, <laughs> play it out? Can we finish our podcast first, and then you can? Uh, and you can I'll do wait. whatever you want I'll with wait. your video of whatever. Poodle. I want to make sure that this is accurate. You know. Oh my God! I have a Carlos video as well. <gasps> what? What is going on? My mate is at the Christmas do at Hillsborough, uh, and last year right. she got me the new Hugh video saying "Merry Christmas, Victoria." And then he cut off. But this year I've got Poodle and Carlos. Which oh. I'm so excited. Sorry. Wow. I think we've lost Vic now. <laughs> yeah, I'm just, I, might, I might go and have He's five gone. minutes on my own. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, if you need to go and lock yourself in your bedroom, then you, you go and do your thing. Bathroom, babe. <laughs> it's an open house here. I need bathroom.